The three that come to get me and take me to craft, they are three gray hybrids. They're about four foot tall and they are not gray. They are reddish brown. And basically they were designed by the tall grays and the interdimensionals to do the leg work because the extraterrestrials and interdimensionals are of a very, very high frequency. Welcome back. I'm here today with Nancy Timms. Nancy, welcome. Thank you. I'm proud to be here. It's an absolute honor. Thank so you. So let's start all the way up at the beginning. So just very quickly, tell the audience about your background and how and when you became an experiencer. Okay. My name is Nancy Timms. I'm a lifelong contactee with interdimensional extraterrestrials. And my first conscious memories are from around two and a half to three years old. And they have just continued all my life up into the present. And it will continue. You know, it's 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 never ending. <laughs> so I have always had face to face physical contact. And what I mean by that is that they manifest in the room wherever I am. They raise my frequency. They take a handheld device or either use their uh, an instrument and they take and run from head to toe, toe to head. And then I will feel my frequency and my body start to vibrate. And as that occurs, I will feel my body start to float up off the bed or up off the floor if I'm just standing. And then one of the three grays that are hybrids will take my hand and lead me out through the ceiling or the roof or through a door or window. And this has occurred all my life. It seems like later, uh, well, recently in the last year, they still do that occasionally, but sometimes they'll do a different type of transfer for me, which they do black me out. But then I wake up on craft. And then sometimes when I'm coming back, I wake up just as they're walking me to the bedroom. And I think it has something to do with all of the activity with the sun yeah. and also because there are more eyes in the sky. There's more focus on what's going on. And plus, I'm doing these podcasts, so may or may not be a focus on watching the area. So th there's a different type of transfer. And I do know that it's something that my body cannot consciously go through because as I wake up walking to the room or they're walking me up, I'm, 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 it's like extreme, extreme vertigo. It's like when you're, if you remember being a kid and you would start like spinning around and then when you stop, you're like all over the place. That's the way I feel. And especially like in my stomach, it's just like I have been on the most incredible type roller coaster feeling. So that has changed, but her, all my life, pretty much, most of my life, they would come and be present. And what they were doing was they were taking that device, and humans are at a very low frequency. So what they were doing was changing my frequency to match their frequency. So in and other the, words, when yeah. you say changing your frequency, they're causing the molecules, yes. DNA, to vibrate at a much faster rate. It's kind of yeah. like seeing a ceiling fan. Sometimes you can't see the fan because it's rotating at a much higher frequency. It's yes. almost like mm -hmm. they're bringing your molecules so that you so you can actually see it moving much. The experience would be you see it moving much sl more yeah. slowly, even though it's moving at the same yeah. rate. You're just operating at a higher rate. Is yes. that a, a, a good interpretation of what Exactly. You mean? But I was able to stay conscious during that process. Like I could see holding her hand and her taking me through the window, going up through the ceiling, up through the attic and looking around and seeing boxes and storage, Christmas decorations, you know, the insulation around, because all of our attics were always unfinished, you know, like the planks on the floor, et cetera. So, but now the way that they're doing it, I can't, for some reason, to stay conscious, I, I don't know if it's me or if it's just the, what, I don't exactly know why, but for some reason, I can't 
either go the distance that we're going or the amount of frequency to stay conscious. I can't handle it on a human level like I am. I don't really know what the difference is. When the United States and China clash, the world will never be the same, especially when forces beyond reality threaten to intervene. What if the United States went to war with the People's Republic of China? How would these rivals fight for supremacy on land, sea, air, and across the stochastic streams of time? What wonder weapons would be unleashed? What horrors would emerge from the irradiated sludge of the South China Sea? What heroes would rise and forever change the course of history? Tread into the deepest and darkest dimensions of the multiverse, gaze through a kaleidoscope of fractured realities, and bear witness to the disturbing visions of World War III from today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Weird World War, China. Available now from Bain Books at Bain.com. As that frequency speeding up and you're kind of, I guess, levitating, etc., does the world around you, like, have you ever had as you're kind of above your house or whatever, and you see cars on the street, people walking, does your frame of reference, the, the people around you start, uh, appear to be moving slower, cars moving slower? Well, usually I don't pay attention to that. I'm more focused on looking at her. And a lot of in the past, a lot of times I would see a craft in the distance. And one thing that was very odd to me was that the craft would seem the size of like half of a American football field, half of it. But then as we would get closer and actually we would go in when I would step in, it was like stepping into a different world. It was like it all changed and it was much, much bigger. It was humongous. So it was like stepping into a new dimension. You know, it's like what it, and things, they can change, like things can appear a certain way for our eyes visually. But in reality, it's much, much bigger. Is it because they're bending space time? So I believe like so. Yeah. I believe so. I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a scientist. I don't, you know, claim to know everything but i know what i experienced and i know that it's very different you know and when you go in the craft for me everything is very white very sterile looking very bright and you know what's i look around and it's like you can never figure out where the light is coming from it's just there and it's just perfect amount of light it's not too bright it's not too dim it's just perfect and you look around like, where is the source of the light? You'll never figure it out. You, it, it, there's just, you'll never figure it out. There's just no way of knowing. And there's I never know the smells, no shadows. I know smells or, you know, and there's not like, you know, how we have knickknacks. There's nothing like that. <laughs> you know, it's just pretty, plus, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. And there's, there's no, frills or anything like that there's no pictures or or things like that i have seen in areas where you can look out and see the you know the sky the space and stuff like that or look down and see earth or whatever but nothing unusual you know but when i get on craft i never the three that come to get me and take me to craft they are three gray hybrids they're about four foot tall and they are not gray. They are reddish brown. And basically, they were designed by the tall grays and the interdimensionals to do the legwork because the extraterrestrials and interdimensionals are of a very, very high frequency. And they have a problem coming down to the density of Earth. And Earth is a much lower frequency. It's very uncomfortable. So they designed or created a hybrid that is not a robot, it's biological, but it is a hybrid and it's genetically designed to be able to do the back and forth. And that is who a lot of times I know that's who come get she comes one of the female, the female I am bonded with. And I have love for her and she has love for me. And I feel like 
in past lives we were we've been together for a very long time and but she's not a mother or anything like that she's more like an assistant or a guardian she's transported so but when i get on craft then i don't even see her or the two that are with her anymore to advertise on through glass darkly Email thrillglassdarkly ads at gmail.com. At that point, I'm around the interdimensional beings that are luminescent, kind of, they're physical, but not like in the physical form, like the greys or like we are or like Nordics or any of the other beings. They're more of a luminescent, opalescent, kind of shiny. And they're like eight foot tall. And then I'm around tall grays, many, many different races of grays. There's over 60 different races of grays in all different colors, all different heights, and some have different facial features. I'm around aquatic beings, humanoids, reptilians, a whole bunch of different ones. And this is a, a mothership with many, many races. And they're all here for to witness humanity's ascension and watch us go through our evolutionary process. And they've been working on this for a very, very long time. Not just, well, as a matter of fact, they have, when I was 30 years old, they showed me a vision because I, w I personally witnessed my two sons being taken for their first contact. We were on a family vacation, Key West, Florida. We were all in the same hotel room, it was at a Marriott, and we... They were in the bed across from my ex-husband, and I've always had the ability or either they're letting me know that they're coming about 10 minutes before. So I feel a frequency change in my body. And so I rose up in the bed, set up and looked. And when they manifest in the room, one of them walks towards me, presses me down. And these grays were three foot tall, not the ones that come for me. They had on long robes and very high collars. And he telepathically told me, this is not about you and go to sleep or lay. No, he said, go lay back down, lay back down. And he pressed me. So when I got down there, then I realized and thought, okay, if this is not about me, oh my goodness. Then I saw them walking towards my children, my two sons. So they put me in a sleep paralysis but I was not asleep. I was wide awake. They left me conscious, but I could not speak <clears throat> and I could not move, which I did try to do because I was very upset. And then I watched them take my kids and they walked across in front of my bed and then they blacked me out and they disappeared. And the next morning when I woke up, they were perfectly fine in the bed. And I did talk to my ex-husband about the you know what it had occurred and we agreed that we would just ask them if they had any strange dreams or any experiences or anything they wanted to talk about and we did or i did and they just looked at me like what you know this you know so we, i left it alone but when i got back home i made a point to meditate and ask why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my children? You know, it was, I had already come to the agreement that it was happening to me. But now, you know, it was involving my children. So I was angry, mad, I felt helpless. You know, all these things that you would feel, you know, betrayed, hurt, mad, everything. And so I asked for them to come and explain this all to me. And they did come, not immediately. Uh, I do not claim to be able to summon them and do all that kind of stuff, you know. But yeah, I they, mean, if, if a human did this to somebody, it would be kidnapping. Like, let's well, let's, yeah. let's let's say it right. Yeah. So, but they did come. They came, and the female gray took me, and she took me to a craft or a ship, and presented me to what I perceived as a group of elders. And these were all interdimensionals of different races. They didn't look alike. They were all different and they were like a group. And I was presented to them and I asked them, 
Why is this happening to me? Why did this happen? Why is this happening to my children? What is the purpose? What is the meaning? And I was 30 years old and they told me that I had made a choice prior to being born on earth to be a part of a evolutionary process, part of an ascension. And that they understood that I don't remember it. They understood that, you know, I don't understand any of this. And so I was, you know, standing there 30 years old. I didn't even know, you know, what ascension, all that kind of stuff even meant at the time. I had no clue. So they opened up like this. They handed me like this blue orb and they opened it up and showed me a vision of myself as an interdimensional and me agreeing and me waiting patiently. And then they walked me through the whole process. I saw myself waiting and then them saying, it's time for your experience on earth. And then me walking towards, and then I visualized my essence, the essence of who I was there going into my mother. And then I witnessed myself being born here on earth. And they were saying, remember to breathe. Remember that you, oh no, they said breathe. And also we will become to see you throughout your life to help you remember who you are and why you came to earth. And that's basically what has happened to me. And it is exactly what's happened to my two sons. In that realm up there, I don't know. I know that we are close and we all chose to do this and be here at different times to support and experience all this. You know, if they were my sons there, I don't know that. I don't know, but I know that we're attached in some way. And so now my sons, my oldest son has the same experiences, contacts, downloads. They gifted us both Kundalini awakenings about two and a half years ago, two years ago. The youngest one hasn't experienced that yet, but he is very aware of all this. He's younger and not He's involved in this, but not to the extent that my oldest son is. So, you know, all my life, I never had anyone to talk to about these things. And it was very hard, you know, because I grew up in Tennessee and that was part of a Bible belt. And these things were cons considered a mental health issue or either demonic. And my parents always told me, you know, when I, you cannot talk about these things, you know, and when I was very little, I think they thought it was just an imagination, you know, a very vivid dreams. But as I got older, they just point blank told me, you cannot talk about these things. People will make fun of you. People will, you will be shunned. You not, you know, you cannot talk about these things. And I figured out real quick that I couldn't. So it was very, very hard for me, you know, and that, you know, I struggled with it. I had lots of struggles with it. I've ended up, I'm going through two divorces, fighting over children, very nasty divorces, et cetera. A lot of, you know, so failed relationships and things like that, which I'm not saying it was 100% because of all this, but it certainly didn't help, you know, because they were not experiencing these things. But now, you know, I'm so thankful that my children have me and we have each other to talk to. And they hopefully won't have to go through a lot of the struggles that I went through because I simply had nobody to talk to. At, at the time that I was their age, the world wasn't ready to hear about these things as they are now. So I'm thankful for that. But it's just been a whole, everything in my life has been good or bad. I understand now it was all part of, to make me who I am now, to help me come out to the world and talk about what they've taught me all these years and what it all means and why they're here now and why it didn't occur before now. So did your parents have similar experiences or did they just not talk about it? You know, I like for people to talk about their own experiences, but I do know, yes, one of them was involved, but 
you know, for them at that time period, it was not the right time. But that their part in this was raising me. You know, and and they did talk to me about things, you know, not necessarily about my experiences or anything like that, but they, you know, we had open co communication about our souls, open communications about life, you know, other than here on earth, et cetera. So they played their part in this. It just wasn't for them exactly now is the time is right because humanity is going through an ascension and an evolutionary process. And this is all, everything has been built up to this, getting us prepared. More things are going to occur to get us more prepared. You know, all this has to be done in a very slow and divine way because we are all a part of this. And we, you know, for the human brain to not flip out, it has to be done in a beautiful, slow way so that we're not overwhelmed and it's easier to digest. And whether we realize it or not, we all chose to come to Earth. We chose to be here. And whether we remember it or not, we knew that this was going to occur in our lifetime and we wanted to be a part of it. And we're all here to serve some part in it, whether it's towards it being good or not really wanting it to occur. You know, people make soul decisions and soul contracts for different reasons. So, you know, we're all here on a spiritual path. So everyone has the opportunity, but nobody's going to be made to do anything they don't want to do and they don't feel comfortable with from their soul level. Again, and not to pry too much, but regarding your parents, did I think you grew up in Tennessee, you said, Yep. Did either of them work for like Oak Ridge National Laboratory or have any ties to the Manhattan Project and or military intelligence backgrounds? No, no. Okay. All right. I had to ask that. Sure. Uh, the uh, other question, these entities that you interact with, where are they from and how are they connected to humanity? Well, what they tell me is that they played a role in our creation. They do not claim to have been the sole creator because they believe in a creator source and they all have souls. So they are billions of years ahead of us in terms of evolution. So they were here long before we were and they've watched us and they've just been waiting for us to reach this point in time to where our awareness has become increasing, our frequency is raising. And so, and that's what's happening right now. So that's why there are many, many different races all around watching and witnessing what's happening here on earth. This is a big event, not only for us, but for them, because we're very unique, you know? So in the way that they the way that they look at us is that they look at all the struggles that we've had coming up into this point, you know, everything that's the whole shebang of things. And if we're capable of actually pulling ourselves out of all that negativity and moving into a better version of ourselves, you know, we're human beings, you know, nobody says that we're going to ever be perfect, but we can be make better decisions, we can be better versions of ourselves. And, it, you know, for us to be able to do this, not only is it fantastic for us here on Earth and unbelievably wondrous, and they're so excited for us, but think about, I know this is hard for people to understand, but we are doing so much for the whole universe because we're doing something that probably no other species has done with this much negativity. And then, you know, moving forward, like we're, looks like where we're headed to me, we're moving to a more positive way of living and thinking and moving out of the negative realm. So, you know, what an inspiration to the whole universe.
if we're capable of doing this, that's going to show anybody in any other planetary systems or wherever this can be done. So we're very unique and all eyes are on us and they're watching with anticipation of how this all unfolds. And I, pretty sure it's going to unfold beautifully for us. You know, as far as a time frame, I can't tell you that. A lot of that depends on us. You know, we're all here on free will, and we have to make our choices of what our soul path is. But as far as you asking me where they're from, well, they're all extraterrestrials or interdimensionals. And I think that that's going to become well known. I mean, it's pretty obvious that if they can come in and disappear, even in their crafts and even in our rooms, they are dimensional. They do not come from where we thought they come from. They could be possibly in that general area, but they would still be interdimensional because it's beyond our visual range. We are in a 3D world. Our visual range is, we can only see certain things, but there's life going on all around us. Things that we can't see does not mean it's not happening because it is. And they proved this to me. And scientists have already come out and said, trees, plants, insects, these things are all living conscious beings, our air, our water. Our planet Earth is a living conscious beings, and they have all have been waiting for us to get to the point to where we move out and start to recognize these things and understand our connections, not only with our planet Earth, with each other, and with all living conscious beings on our planet. And we will learn to treat our environment and our planet Earth better because we'll finally reconnect, you know. So this is such a big thing. We're going to learn so much about our true origins, the whole history of our planet. And, you know, with all these things occurring, by the time we get to the end of of, of this ascension or this evolutionary process, it's going to be slow, so slow and beautiful. It's going to feel like our world has always been this way because it's never going to be like the difference between night and day. It's a slow, beautiful way. And it has to be done this way because this is a worldwide phenomenon and it is about all of humanity. So that's why I say we human beings, humanity, all of us, we are the disclosure because we are the ones that are being watched and all of the everything else, our planet Earth, every, all living conscious beings on our planet, all beings in other dimensions or realms are watching us. We are the television show of the century. They're watching us to see, do we get this right? Do we get it right? You know, and I'm pretty sure we are. I mean, I I don't think that they've been wasting all this time for nothing, you know. And I think there's a lot of reason, too, why our government is slow and only putting out things in very slow spurts. Because if they know what I know, what they've taught me, and if they know this, why would they come out and freak out the world? and cause all of this friction, cause all of this fear, drama, irrational behaviors when they know what exactly what I've been told. Be patient. Let evolution run its course. People will be given the information. They will not care that the government, that it did not come from them because they're going to know this information. And we will not need to know anything from the government, we are going to know ourselves. And it's more going to be digestible and understandable where as we ascend, where before in the past, it would not have occurred that way. So this is the right time. And this is why it's happening right now is because we are reaching our ascension in an evolutionary stage. And as far as where they're from, 
There is no word for where they're from. Locations don't have names. They don't use names. They are interdimensional. They're all around us. You know, so it's kind of like dimensions are not physical places. They're higher levels of consciousness. So they could be right here in the room with me right now, listening to me and you have this conversation. They could be in the room there with you right now. And they're, that doesn't mean they're not there. I mean, because, and they've witnessed to me or gave me affirmations that, you know, that they've moved things on clocks. They've moved things to let me know they're all around us. And they're not hiding from us in our skies or in our solar system. They're all over the place. We just simply can't see it with our 3D eyes. And these things are going to change, not overnight, but we're going to become more aware of not only of them, but everything in the paranormal field. We're going to start to visually more of humanity, all of humanity eventually will start to just start to see these things. And it won't be so paranormal anymore, <laughs> you know, because none of these things are hiding from us. They're just in beyond our level of seeing. And we're going to increase into that. Now, how often do you see these beings? If I'm not physically with them, they are in my dream state constantly. They are constantly even in the even during the day you know it's like they're giving me information you know and i'm becoming more and more aware of how attached i am to them and how connected i am to them and how all my life growing up you know we always thought that this was it just what we see what's around us and i more and more i understand there's so much more to everything in life. And we're just at the very beginning of a new way of thinking and a new way of living that's going to change the human experience here on this planet. And we're going to learn to live much longer lives. We're going to, you know, all the technology that's been suppressed for all these years, you know, we should have no poverty. We should have no diseases. You know, everything that we ever needed from what they tell me was put here in some form when we were created, whether it be a mineral, plant, bark, a some kind of water, nectar, whatever. Everything we ever needed is here. So when we come to figure out all these things, no one's ever going to be able to manipulate or control us again, like what occurred in the 3D realm, where we had these human elites that own and operate and control everything. We're moving out of that. Yeah, realm. they're trying harder than ever now. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it, what they tell me is that for us to understand the true evils of the world, they have to surface. And they are trying everything to stop us from ascending because they'll never be able to control us again. And for them, it's more about power than it is money. It's the power and control. So as we ascend, they lose all that. But also they will make these attempts, but also for us to understand the true evils and the true programming and the misinformation and separate lies from truth. It has to surface for us to see, oh, okay, you know. So there's a lot of reasons why it happens that way. So <clears throat> it's an amazing time to be alive, and we are all part of this. This is the biggest event since our creation. And, you know, I just hope people understand that we are all a part of this, you know, and this is a big deal. And, you know, we should all do what we can but the main thing that they want humans to do is look within figure out who you are not for example i figured out i'm not the nancy Timms that the world programmed or made me to be i am now the nancy Timms that knows my inner soul self and i know that i came to earth 
to help humanity. And I came here with a purpose and a mission. So what I do is I ask my subconscious to open up into my human consciousness and help me with all the challenges and things that are occurring in the world. Help me to personally understand truth from lies, what's the good information, and we're all being faced with these things. And the best person to trust is your subconscious, your soul self. They know everything about you and the truth about our planet and the history of our planet, everything. So that's what they want. You don't have to believe anything I say. I, You know, I'm just asking humanity to look within, you know, follow your heart, follow your soul, get in tune with it. You know? Did you ever get a sense in your communication how many people have been interacting with these entities worldwide? Over time, like, you know, I mean, I know there's probably not an exact number, but is it small fraction? Is it half? Is it all? What's your sense of that? I think everybody has a, one way or another. And I, it's been going on since the beginning of time. And we were just not at a consciousness level to understand it or to have the confidence to come out about it we dismissed it we suppressed it because of the programming and influences the world put you know put around us and it was we were told it's demonic we were told it's a mental health issue you know people are you know you're going to keep your mouth shut if you're going to be judged by the world so i think it's been going on since the beginning of time and i think that we all have junk DNA, and that junk DNA is from the cosmic realm. So it's just whether we're willing to accept it or not, because they're not going to push humans any further than what they're ready for. So a lot of people make so contracts to have to to have interactions with extraterrestrials. And a lot of people call them abductions. And what they felt, the extreme fear, is real. I felt extreme fear. I know what it feels like. And But I do know that a lot of times their experience is not the reality of what really happened, but it was very real to them. And it's like I was talking to you earlier. It's like when we have these experiences and extraterrestrials and interdimensionals are of a very very high frequency so when we come face to face with them it's not what they look at look like it is the frequency exchange between a human being and a higher dimensional higher frequency being it is overwhelming and it's a combination of extreme you feel it they admit this and you feel it in your body and it's like a combination of extreme fear and extreme euphoria all balled up into one. And our brains is like, what is this? You know, is this good or bad? What is this? So what happens is, is that they are in a higher frequency and for them to come here temporarily to have the interaction with a human being, in their reality, they do not have fear, negativity. They don't understand these feelings and they don't like it because they have evolved past these things. So when they feel extreme fear or all this stuff, they black you out. So they either touch you on the forehead or they do it with their consciousness. And, you know, they can black you out or they can put you in a sleep paralysis, which they can totally put you out or you can be conscious or you can have what they call what's called fragmented memories which i experienced a whole lot because they were giving me an opportunity to figure out that my fear was based on what i had been reading or what you know listening to what people were saying movies i had watched and that built up fear in me because when i was very little and had these experiences i never had fear but when i became a junior high to high school and started seeing movies and reading things, then I questioned, what are these experiences? 
you know, because I was hearing all these horrible things. And so that put that in my brain. So my experience has changed when they sense that extreme fear. They black me out. But for me, it was fragmented memories. But other people, it's like missing time. They come back and say they have missing time. So what happens is, is when you get back and you realize that you've either got the fragmented memories or the black or missing time, a lot of times our brain will use what's in our belief system or what is in our brain's data bank of information of what that experience might have been like. And they will, and it's real as the devil to these people. I mean, it's, it's real. It's real to them. And I, they're not lying. It's real. But that's just their brain's way of trying to rationalize it in our world where these things don't occur. But the reality is they were blacked out the whole time. And the experience, they end up going through the whole experience. And you're fully functional. You just don't remember it. In my case, I had fragmented memories where I would remember bits and pieces so that I could reach a point to where I would say, okay, these are, are still occurring. So what do I have to do to change this? And they told me telepathically, you've got to eliminate your fear. You've got to face your fears. And so now, even now, I still have to remind myself because I know when they're coming and that's them letting me know to mentally prepare myself because this frequency exchange is unreal. So when I start to feel it and feel that overwhelming flooding of fear, then I have to tell myself, you know what this is. You've done this before. Face the fear, push into it. And so now I can have, again, fully conscious contact with them, but it didn't happen overnight. Now, is there anyone in the population that may have had these experiences, but have no idea that they have? And then secondarily, at some point, will they be reminded or will they have memories? Yes and yes. People suppress it. And because of whatever the fear is, and they can read your mind, you know, so that's how they know that you're having these extreme fear thoughts or anger or whatever they're telepathic and they can they know our emotions so people that made these soul contracts if they're feeling this extreme fear they're going to black them out but they may even give them some fragmented memories to see how their brain processes it so if they are figuring out like i did that i was creating the fear or if they just stay in the position that, oh, it was horrible. Oh, it was horrible. They'll never progress into, you know, because they can't handle it. They haven't moved to that point. But as we go through this ascension and stuff, all this information is going to come clear. So that will be part of the process. If people will know their connections. Yeah. Okay. Now, the beings that you've talked about appear to have entirely positive motivations are there any factions of beings interdimensional extraterrestrial or however you want to categorize them that are either neutral or negative no no a lot of the grays and the reptilians are really misunderstood i've heard all kinds of stories from being robotic to just soul suckers to drink a bullet none of that's true the 3d rim is the rim that we're in this is a lower rim that all this negativity wars and etc evils can occur so anything that's in the 3d rim can and could be negative just like human beings but anything above into a higher dimensional realm is of a, they've evolved in their evolutionary process. They have evolved past these negative ways. And the way that they show me is like what they did and what we're doing, we're going up a DNA ladder 
And as we go up the DNA ladder through our ascension, negative thoughts, negative ways, warlike ways, all these things fall off little by little, not overnight, falls off little by little. Because we realize that for humanity, we realize that it no longer serves us any purpose, and it prevents us from reaching higher levels of consciousness and ascension. It holds us back. And we also realize that by moving forward, well, it's like this. If you want to be a species of beings that is going to survive for billions of years, just like the interdimensionals and all these other extraterrestrials, you have to learn to come together as one, as in unity, which we were created to be. And we're just now going to figure this out. They are all one. They are all in unity together. And to be able to survive for billions of years, you have to go through this process of learning to get rid of negative ways. Because if we stay in the 3D realm that we're in right now, we're looking at a third world war. So this has to occur to prevent us from wiping out either all of us or part of our population. So this is another reason why this needs to occur, you know, because our technology is to the point to where if it's left in the wrong hands in this negative realm, it will be abused, misused, not used for the benefit of humanity, but used in, as weapons or negative ways. And that will be the downfall of our civilization. And not that they would ever let us just completely destroy our whole planet, which they won't, or ourselves. But if it took part of our planet having a mass negative attack like that from our own selves, it might have to occur to push us over to understanding that these evil negative ways no longer serve us. And I'm hoping that that won't occur I haven't seen, they haven't given me any visions. Like I've heard people say that they see visions of all this stuff. I see beautiful things ahead for us, but I also know it is in humanity's hands. So any final words for the audience? Work on being who you are. Remember who you are, you know, be proud of who you are. Humans are unique. We are wonderful. We chose to be here. We are the disclosure and, you know, we should all, work on being a better version of ourselves. We may not ever be perfect, but we can work on being better versions and learn to have a world of more peace, more positive things. Try to be more positive. Whenever you have a negative thought, replace it with two positive thoughts. All right, Nancy, it was an absolute pleasure, and we'll talk again soon. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, please hit like and subscribe, and also hit the notification button so you can be notified whenever I post new content. Thank you. Now, if you're enjoying the channel and you want to support it, there are several things you can do. In fact, there are five things you can do. The first thing you can do is just buy my books. I got plenty of books out in the market right now, and I would prefer that folks buy a book rather than giving me direct support because they get something out of it. They have a real tangible product. The second way you can support me is by becoming a member on YouTube or becoming a patron on Patreon. And just go to either site and it'll explain everything. Third way you can support the channel is by checking out my merch site, which is here. There's plenty of stuff that you could get to support the channel. And I'd appreciate that you, you have it and you can wear it. Not only do you help support the channel, but you also help promote the channel. And I appreciate that. The fourth way that you can support the channel, and this is really easy, is anytime you want to buy something on Amazon, literally just go to the description below and click on any link, literally any link. 
The channel gets a cut of that, and it costs you no extra money. You just go through the link as I'm part of the Amazon Affiliates program. The fifth and final way you can support the channel is through donations. Now, I don't prefer these because it's more of an expression of gratitude, but you don't really get anything out of it as a subscriber to the channel. However, if you decide to do these options, there's two options. There's Buy Me A Coffee, which is a separate site, and there's also you can go through YouTube with either a Super Chat, Super Sticker, or a Super Thanks. Again, I prefer Buy Me A Coffee because that organization takes less money than Amazon does. But either way, I appreciate any support you, you are willing to give the channel. So thank you very much and keep watching. I really appreciate it.